Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all. And a very, very, very happy, joyful, blessed, and interesting new year. I like adding that word interesting. So no matter what happens, it might be interesting. Anyway, so have an interesting new year. The last one was interesting. Uh, I think it was quite good in part. Not completely, but in part. There were moments. All years have their moments, really. I'll be saying a little bit about that later on. And uh, before we go any further, Alan, where's Alan? Alan has a few words he'd like to say to you. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I've kind of been drafted in at very last minute to do this, but um, on the 13th of January, um, we are going to be starting the first of our uh, Your Space groups. And the focus of the Your Space group is an LGBTQI plus kind of support network, come social group, art activities, film activities for LGBT people and their allies. Um, we're going to be holding it on the first, no sorry, not the first, what am I talking about? The second, I'm going to start that again because I'm clearly talking rubbish, um, on the, uh, twice a month on, a ch on first, the second Tuesday and the, th the fourth Thursday, I think. I'll, I'll clarify in better details because this is about as clear as mud. But yes, um, I will clarify on a Facebook post and send it round to everybody. Sam would have given out the announcement today, but um, unfortunately couldn't be with us. So if you need any more details, don't ask me because clearly I'm a bit messed up this morning. But um, Alistair will know and Sam will give further details. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Alan. Well, we'll put up the dates and so forth so we can put them out in a message so everybody will be clear. Thank you very much, Alan. Let us prepare ourselves for our hour of worship, meditation, song, and prayer. We bid you welcome who come with weary spirit seeking rest, who come with troubles that are too much with you, who come hurt and afraid. We bid you welcome, who come with hope in your heart, who come with anticipation in your step, who come proud and joyous. We bid you welcome, who are seekers of a new faith, who come to probe and explore, who come to learn. We bid you welcome, who enter this hall as a homecoming, who have found here room for your spirit, who find in this place a family. Whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are on your journey, we bid you welcome. Amen. And now may we sing together our first hymn, and in the Red Book it's 448, Bless, O Lord, the opening year.
Now, we didn't have anybody uh, down on the road to, to read this morning, as we normally do with a member of the congregation, but we will be making up our rotors. So anyone who wishes to read, please talk to myself or Isabella. But however, here is one I prepared earlier on. Well, not me, actually it was Robert Frost. And it's two roads. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Beautiful poem by Robert Frost. Let us pray. Loving God, inclusive God, the source of all our dreaming, help us to dream of a better world, a world of justice and peace, of calmness, of love, in which the whole of creation is treated with reverence and respect. Compassionate God, who empowers and frees us from our reluctance to change, enable us to take responsibility for our own thoughts and actions, and so become compassionate people who work to create a better world. Inclusive God, may our wild storms come out of your still waters so that our anger may be focused on supporting just causes rather than merely being an expression of our inner turmoil. Grant that we may not be so enchanted by still waters that we fail to do anything about injustices, about oppression throughout our beloved world. And now may we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And uh, now may we sing together our second hymn, and in the Red Book it's 118, The First Noel.
Uh, for the second reading, I've selected a, a poem by Michael D. Higgins, who is now the President of Ireland. And I want to dedicate it to uh, Desmond, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Uh, um, the poem appeared in a book of poetry by Michael D. Higgins in 1993 called The Season of Fire. Uh, how I came across the poem was, it was in a Christmas card I received last year from Michael D. Higgins. I didn't receive one this year, and I think it might be because I criticized them in the Sunday Times for not going to Armagh, which surprised me because I didn't think Michael D. would read the Sunday Times, but there you go. I know him from old. Uh, we were comrades in the Labour Party together and very involved in the trade union movement together. And I'd like to read this poem dedicate, as I said, to Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who was buried yesterday. I got a, a, a message this morning from a friend of mine in South Africa saying, Chris, your old friend Desmond Tutu died and or is, was buried yesterday. And I wrote back to him saying, I actually admired him, but he wasn't my old friend. I didn't know him, but I was a big admirer of Desmond Tutu. And he insisted, he persisted, and he sent me another message saying, well, I saw you in a photograph with him. Well, now, I've never appeared with Desmond Tutu in a photograph. However, I'm willing to let that story live. Because <laughs> I think it's a good one. Oh, yeah, myself and Desmond. Anyway, he was a great man, and he got involved here. He made a... Uh, a journey to Northern Ireland and he was um, supportive of the process, the peace process here and of course we all know his great contribution to overturning apartheid in South Africa. So this is a poem, it's a Christmas poem written by Michael Day but I think it reflects somewhat on the life of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. In the journey to the light, the dark moments should not threaten belief. Belief requires that you hold steady, bend if you will with the wind. The tree is your teacher, roots at once more firm from experience in the soil made fragile. Your gentle dew will come, and a steering of power to go on towards the space of sharing. In the misery of the eye, in rage, it is easy to cry out against all others, but to awaken is to die in the misery of knowing. The journey abandoned towards the sharing of all human hope and cries is the loss of all we know, of the divine reclaimed for our shared humanity. Hold firm, take care, come home together. The inspiring words of Uktaran the Heron, Michael D. Higgins. And now, Brian, strip, you're on. <laughs> Not today, Violina. Morning, everyone. Uh, this song, folks, uh, Sam again, what he was supposed to perform this morning, but um, I think he's been a bit under weather, so Trevor asked me to stand in. This is a song that, uh, it's uh, another one of the songs by a guy called Shel Silverstein, who wrote loads of uh, songs for different people. He was a, 
he was he wasn't so much a great singer but he was a great great songwriter a great storyteller and um, this one he wrote for Dr. Hook, who were very successful in the 70s. But it was whenever he came back from his travels, because he, he, was, he was a lot older than them and he had done everything, he, uh, they used to sit around and listen to him sing. And when he sang maybe one or two songs, they, they would have said, you know, that's my favorite shell, that's the one I like. And then they'd sang some more. And then, no, that's my favorite. They couldn't make up their mind. But all his songs were, were fantastic. And this one I've started to sing lately at my gigs. And, it seems to be going down well, but as my two kids always say to me, Daddy, why do you sing all these sad songs? You know why? That's, I think it's just because I'm miserable. <laughs> Guess the dance is over now. You just curtsy and I bow. So I'll just take what's left of me Back to where it used to be And you go sail your magic carpet Far across the sky that you built so high were just too steep for me to climb and I guess these dirty streets of mine were just too rough for you I wish I could have helped to see just one of your sweet childhood dreams but though I tried, I could not make not one of them come true. I wish I could have made it more like the movies for you. Some pretty technique, colored way that's never been. Sorry, when I kissed you, you only heard me whisper. You never got to hear those violins. No, you never got. You only heard me whisper You never got to hear those violins No, you never got to hear those violins
Thank you, Brian. That was wonderful. Thank you. Two things I forgot to remember to say to you during the notices. One was, um, please stay and have some tea or coffee or wee buns with us. I think we've got Christmas cake this morning. And also, um, we're not doing our... Oh, yeah, and the envelopes, those who are have um, stipend envelopes, Charles is signaling to me that they're down at the door if you want to collect your envelopes on the way out. And finally, uh, if we, we are not doing collections in the church because we think it's still not safe to go around with whatever. And uh, so, but we do have a box down at the front of the church. So if you're feeling generous on your way out, you can please leave something in the box. Thank you very much. Well, as I said at the beginning of the service, a peaceful, happy, that goes without saying, happy, loving, and interesting New Year. I hope all of you have a happy, a loving, and interesting New Year. And whatever other adjectives you want to add on to Happy New Year, you go ahead, add them on, and it'll make your New Year even more exciting. Interesting is a good word because it suggests that many things might come along, not all good, but interesting. And that makes life interesting. So we like interesting things to happen, or do we? Maybe not. Maybe people like bland, indifference. I don't think so. I think most people like a little bit of, I wasn't expecting that, COVID. Where did that come from? You know, that type of thing. In reality, in reality, it is just another number in our way of measuring time when we celebrate a new year. It really is just another way of measuring time, but so handy in many ways, like you have to have your tax return in or you'll be told not a very happy new year from HMRC. And you, there's lots of things that are done at the end of the year. People, people actually get a bit frantic and they think, I need that done to the house before the end of the year. Or I need to get change my car before the end of the year. And it, this doesn't register up here because I still cannot work out how to judge the age of a car in Northern Ireland by the number plate. Now, some people tell me you can I can't, and I'll, I, somebody will have to explain that to me. So I'm assuming I'm driving around a car that everybody thinks I only bought last year, but I don't think that really works like that. In the South, it's really easy. The number is up there on the back of the car, and that drives people from Kalini really mad. I pick Kalini because I know people from Kalini, and they hate a new year because that means if it's my car has 2021, and I'm now in 2022, and I still have 21 on the back of the car. Now, it's very hard to live in Kalini if it's 22, and you now have 21 on the back of the car. Believe me, I know these things. Anyway, that was a bit of a deviation from what I was going to, to tell you. I don't know where that came from. I was inspired. And we all make firm New Year resolutions, hoping with a sincere intent to keep them. And we make them at the beginning of the New Year. Not all of us, some of us. Some people are determined never to make a New Year's resolution on a point of principle. But even that is playing into the New Year thing, in a way, I believe. Like you could always say, well, I won't make an Easter resolution but I'm definitely not making a New Year's resolution, is actually being part of making New Year's resolutions. Does that make sense? It does to me. I know there's a few people nodding in agreement. That might be sympathy. However, like lots of rituals, and it is a ritual, and welcoming in the New Year is one of those rituals. It is a ritual, just like going to church. Like anything else, it's a ritual. It has a psychological moment in our lives. 
We all send each other little short greetings now that we have WhatsApp and messaging and everything else. We all quickly, and at, just immediately after 12 o'clock at night, you're sitting watching Jules Holland and Hoot Nanny going like this, trying to answer all the messages that we knew. And I've been putting interesting into them all. So there you go. Wishing each other Happy New Year. It doesn't matter who you are, there are no agnostics. There are no atheists. I've never heard, and I know many of my friends are members of Atheist Ireland, and yet I got a greeting Happy New Year from the chairman of Atheist Ireland. So there you have it. There are no atheists with regard to New Year. I've never heard someone saying, I'm agnostic, I'm not sure where I really believe in the Happy New Year thing. And I've never heard an atheist say, well, I firmly don't believe in the Happy New Year thing. There is no such thing as a new year. It's a figment of our imagination. Never heard that. Matter of fact, as I said, I got a greeting from a prominent atheist in Dublin. Well, he sees himself as the number one atheist in Dublin. So it has great significance for most people. Street parties, don't know if there were too many of those, but street parties. Uh, a friend of mine from Sicily sent me a, um, a little video of herself dancing with her two sons, or two children, boy and a girl, both police office, officers in the Sicilian police. And there she was dancing with them with champagne. Now, you would not believe they were singing in Italian. Of course, as you would in Sicily, you would sing Happy New Year in Italian, which I don't know. I should really know it for obvious reasons, but I don't know it. But they were singing in Italian Happy New Year. And you'd never believe this, to look at that woman and her two children, who are now members of the, uh, the, the Italian police service, that she grew up on the Shanko. She's from the Shankill Road. So there you go. Anyway, I thought you might need to know that. So also the other thing that happened was thousands of Scots fled across the border into England, particularly Newcastle, to celebrate the new year because in Scotland, I think everything was closed. Uh, I remember that Scotland was like that years ago. Do you remember? And I worry about Scotland and Wales. I genuinely do. Are they returning? I remember hitchhiking in Wales and thinking I'd like a drink. And it was Sunday and nothing was open. It was in the 60s or the 70s. And Scotland was the same. And my fear is, I know there's COVID, but at this, you know, just putting that out there, maybe some Scottish people could answer that for me. But anyway, thousands of Scots fled to Newcastle because they could have a drink and they could celebrate the new year. And thousands of Welsh people crossed into England, into Chester and other little uh, parts of England to celebrate the new year. And if you notice in Belfast, you mightn't particularly notice, there is an awful lot of Dublin Reg cars. And that's because the pubs are closing at eight o'clock in Dublin. Eight o'clock, everything closes in Dublin at eight o'clock. And you know, you would really think people could never get another drink. Life cannot go. And I remember when the lockdown was stricter in the South than it was up here. And they were interviewing Dublin lads who were sitting outside a pub in Belfast. And they said to them, why are you up here drinking? And they said, ah, because you're not allowed into the pubs in Dublin. Yeah, but you're sitting outside. Yeah, but you can go in if you want to. And that made sense to me as a Dublin person. So there you have it. So Dublin is full, or Belfast is full of Dubliners. And it's not unique to us. It's not just unique, the whole New Year thing, to those of us in the UK and in Ireland and in Europe. Other people celebrate New Year at a different time of the year. There is Rosh Hashanah. Jewish New Year, and in 2022, will begin on the evening of the 25th of September and ends in the evening of the 27th of September. 
So put that in your diary. That will be Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. And then there's, I hope I pronounce this right, because it's Persian. Nowruz is the Iranian New Year, all know, also known as the Persian New Year, which begins on the spring equinox, marking the first day in the Persian lands of Farvardin. Now, I'll probably be corrected on that by Majid later on, that my pronunciation wasn't quite right. And I think this will be at half past three on Sunday, the 20th of March. So put that in your diary so we'll celebrate the Persian New Year. And not to be left out, there's the Chinese New Year, or the Spring Festival, is the most important celebration observed in China, with cultural and historic significance. A huge event. Now, most countries actually measure the New Year by Western New Year. Um, the, is it the, which calendar is it? The Gregorian calendar? Yeah. And so they measure it by that. But they all still have their own way of measuring what they regard as the New Year. Some of them, I think, quite interesting that it would be nice if the New Year began in spring. And in the Chinese New Year, the festival signals the beginning of spring, as I just mentioned, and the start of a new year, according to the Chinese lunar calendar. There is a text in scripture that goes as follows. This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel. But it doesn't actually say which month. It just says this month. But it is marking out a particular time that we should celebrate or mark the new year. We read in Exodus that the first day of the new year is in the spring. In the month Passover celebrated is the beginning of the new year. But yet, going a little bit further in Exodus, Exodus 23 indicates that the end of the year is in the fall. Now that's a little puzzling. In the same book, it tells you that it's spring is the new year, and then later on, it tells you that fall is the new year. That must be very puzzling for fundamentalists. We can hack that sort of thing. We can take that and say, yeah, okay. But for fundamentalists, there must be a lot of heads going a little bit odd because trying to work that one out. Now, no ambiguity exists in the book of Leviticus. There it is clear that the first day of the new year is to be the day of rest and day of sounding of trumpets, a high holy day. So that's what it tells you you should do on the first day of the new year. It should be a day of rest and a day of sounding the trumpet, a high holy day. But it just doesn't say when. So you have your choice there. You could go back to Exodus and pick either spring or fall, whatever. Now, did you know that as a date in the Christian calendar, New Year's Day liturgically marked the feast of the naming and circumcision of Jesus? Did you know that? Which is still observed as such in the Anglican Church, the Lutheran Church, and by the Eastern Orthodox Churches. Eight days after the birth, is that right, Fiolina? Eight days after the birth, you celebrate the Feast of the Circumcision of Jesus. And this was because Jesus was circumcised as a Jew on the eighth day after his birth. And until 1960, the Catholic Church celebrated, in particular, as Circumcision Day. And in medieval times, now, I didn't know whether to read this out. It could be the end of my ministry, but I'll go for it. In medieval times, the holy foreskin was worshipped in many Eastern churches. 
I hope that I should have given a trigger warning. Aren't you supposed to give trigger warning? Well, I'm sorry, I didn't give a. I will probably be cancelled now because I didn't give a trigger warning. So I hope none of you have been upset by that statement. And there you have it. That's what I have to say about the new year. New Year's parties, celebrations, whatever. They will continue and we will always celebrate the new year because somehow as part of this time of the year when we celebrate the coming of a divine light into our midst, we continue to celebrate because we also imbibe on the idea not only is that divine light come amongst us, but there is also a splendid new year ahead where all the promises we make in church, in our communities, or wherever, we hope to deliver on those promises. We hope to start afresh. And in a way, as a rich ritual, that, in my opinion, is a good thing. So may I once again wish you a blessed, happy, peaceful, joyful, and interesting New Year. Amen. It's me again. <laughs> and now may we sing our final hymn, hymn number 122. It came upon the midnight hour.
the blessing of truth be upon us. The power of love direct us and sustain us. And may the peace of this community preserve our going out and our coming in from this time forth until we meet again. Amen. God bless you all. Go in peace. Thank you.